Hello, my name is Sarah Enfuso, and today I'll be addressing the intersection between the soundscape and the built environment through the lens of architecture and landscape design, specifically pertaining to the San Diego River at the I-5 and I-8 junction. The goal of my thesis is to demonstrate how architecture is a multi-sensory experience that has the potential to revitalize neglected environments through the combination of visuals and sounds while maintaining and honoring the site's rich history by making the river significant to the city once again. To provide some background of the San Diego River, I'll begin first with this map that dates back to 8000 BCE when the Kumeyaay people were first thought to have inhabited the land. During this expansive time period, the river divided the Kumeyaay land into two areas, Ipai in the north and Tipai in the south. Besides being an important geographical marker, the river additionally was a source of water and sustenance for the Kumeyaay people. One of the largest villages, Kosei, existed on the bend of the river, where present-day Old Town currently resides. The river played a leading role in Kumeyaay life for thousands of years, unaltered and untouched. It was not until 1769 that Kumeyaay life changed forever when the Spanish missionaries arrived and set up camp on the Presidio Hill, located just behind the Kosai village, to control the land and baptize the Kumeyaay. From that point on, the Kumeyaay were forcibly pushed east as the Spanish colonized the land and the river became dispensable. About a hundred years later, the Kumeyaay people were pushed out of the scene completely as immigrants began to settle in Old Town. Because of this influx, business tycoons decided to build the new center of San Diego, which is now downtown. Since the river emptied into San Diego Bay, which bordered their new metropolitan center, they had the river rerouted into Mission Bay in 1853. This new course of the river eliminated the bend around Old Town and rendered it practically non-existent and unimportant. Which brings us to the present-day map of the site, where the San Diego River now empties into a delta, thus splitting the land into quadrants of Mission Bay, Linda Vista, Point Loma, and Old Town. Even though the river has once again become a geographical marker, it has become rather polluted and neglected as the surrounding neighborhoods have grown immensely over the years, and as a result have pushed the river into the background. The bottom line is that the river has become disassociated with San Diego as a result of urbanization. As an attempt to bring the river back to life through the intervention of visual and sonic designs, I plan on employing formal sounds that cohabitate with the existing informal sounds to create a sonic environment that engages the user. After doing extensive research on soundscaping techniques, I have found that the sound masking and sound absorption would make the most sense on my site. I plan to implement these techniques in the form of sound installations to match or exceed the decibel levels of the surrounding highways to mask their sounds as well as vegetated walls to absorb the sound waves thus resulting in lower decibel levels experienced by the users below. The goal is not to start from a blank slate, but to ensure that the past, present, and future of the river all exist in harmony with each other. This map highlights the condition of the river today, sandwiched between dense infrastructure and unreachable by foot. The blush hues represent the marsh-like terrain of the delta, and the tan hues represent the sand-like terrain that is not favored by the surrounding vegetation. Through field research, my particular site contains some of the areas with the highest decibel ratings on purpose in order to reclaim them and render them inviting instead of dangerous and cacophonous to users. The main interventions that I plan on including throughout my site are terraced river access, tree-lined freeway ramps, vegetated sound barriers, a formal performance center, as well as a soundscape art installation. This map is a comprehensive drawing of what the site aims to achieve. A collection of the past and the present through sonic and visual designs that combine said interventions on the previous slide. The various bridges and ramps existing on this site will become a part of the new design intervention instead of ignored, as the San Diego River has been for so many years. Instead of the current infrastructure existing merely for urban transit, its new role will be to harbor vegetated growth and create a unique spatial and sonic experience for the user on the paths of the river park below. Even though most of the designs on my site are landscaping and soundscaping techniques, I did want to design a formal performance center that interacts with the informal sonic environment and in itself is a soundscape installation. The subterranean level of the performance center consists of the stage and eight rows of audience seating. This modest space will enable musicians and other performing artists to have a place to express themselves in a setting that has more of a community feel. The user enters the ground level of the performance center by proceeding underneath a large wind chime installation suspended from the green roof. Once inside, the user enters the ticketing area before accessing the cafe, the lounge, the elevator to the suspended practice rooms, the all-gender restrooms, and the stairwell. The interior of the space is heavily vegetated to maximize the amount of sound absorption in the atrium style plan. Finally, the user can take the elevator to the lofted and suspended practice room area where they can choose from six rooms to warm up and practice in before their performance. 
When there is not a scheduled performance, these spaces will be available to reserve by the public to encourage artistic and creative expression in a way that our city has not seen before. The performance center is oriented with the entrance facing north so that the wind chime installation is exposed to the winds on the site that come from the west and head east to the mountains. Users can wait for the performances to begin at the Terrace River seating, which is located right in front of and to the side of the performance center. The Terrace River access enables users to engage with the river through the senses of sight, sound, and touch, which has been inaccessible to the public due to overgrown brush, marsh-like conditions, and the lack of a footpath for nearly 100 years. From the Performance Center, the user can head west and pass under the I-5, an instance that was once too loud to hear a person speaking next to you. This area is highly vegetated to maximize sound absorption, and some seating has been installed for users to enjoy the sights of greenery, passersby, and a shallow portion of the river that has been cleaned. Once the user crosses under the I-5, they are able to take a path designed similarly to the Japanese nightingale flooring, a style of installation that results in the wooden panels creaking or singing like a nightingale bird. This soundscape intervention combined with the sonic art installation on the island located on the western part of the site should have a high enough decibel level to mask the sounds of the highway overhead so that the user can experience an immersive sonic environment rather than the informal sounds produced as a result of transit. For hundreds of years, the San Diego River has been a victim of urbanization which has resulted in its neglect and absence as a key part of San Diego life. This revitalization project will not only clean up its polluted waters, but it will create a site that is a central beacon of the city through community, nature, and multi-sensory experiences. This project demonstrates that one discipline is never isolated and that considering the expanse of human senses during the design process has the potential to unify our communities like never before. Thank you.